headquarters, Jeff Burkholder with New Media Vision. I want to tell you about the amazing HydroPot growing system and technology. It's a huge game changer in the way people will grow anything, well, anywhere. The HydroPot is a revolutionary system in technology. It reoxygenates the water while directly feeding the roots. Results with the HydroPot have found that it uses 60% less water than other traditional methods or other systems. I've also seen firsthand the results from this system. It grows faster. I sat down with Reb Bieber, inventor, owner, and patent holder of the HydroPot, and asked him how he revolutionized the way people will grow anything. He'll explain the HydroPot system and technology and how he's going to possibly change the way people grow food around the world, and I feel how he'll change the world. Reb Bieber, owner and inventor of the HydroPot, what is the HydroPot technology? Uh, well, in the simplest terms, the HydroPot technology is a soilless growing system for any plant uh, that reuses and reoxygenates water. Well, why is, okay, what, what's, a, what's different between this and other hydroponic systems? Uh, most hydroponic systems today use a top-down uh, watering method. In, in other words, they pump the water down through the plant uh, into a reservoir and then pump the water back Basically up. a drip system. Basically, yes, that reuses the Reuse water. A drip. Okay, so reusable drip system. I brought a demo, a demo model here uh, and that yeah. I think it, it describes a hydropot uh, better than I can. So what I'm using is in. a small air compressor and you can see as I'm pressurizing the uh, sealed chamber, the water's shooting right Shoot. up where the roots of the plants would be. Bubbles, bubbles and oxygen. Bubbles and oxygen. After 15 minutes, I get 90% of the oxygen's put back in the water. So when you shut that off, the water goes back down into the tank, fresh and ready to be reused by the plant. So reusing the same water, of course, reoxygenating the mm -hmm. water means no stagnation to the water, which we obviously know plants don't like stagnant water. You can't live in stagnant water. Uh, it becomes poisonous to them. And then I add the nutrients in a liquid form, the fertilizer, it, what the are, food. What are, okay, and what are nutrients? Uh, well, you know, there's there's a variety of different nutrients. Uh, you know, fish emulsion is one. Think of okay. it as fish food, which was what the what the Indians did for years. They used to right. put their fish guts down in their cornfields and, and, plant, and the, plant it on plant top. The corn on top. That's right. So, uh, using I use all organic nutrients in my plants. This plant has used all yeah. organic. Nutrients. Yeah. Okay. I remember seeing this Japanese maple, which, by the way, is beautiful right now. Uh, it was only about a foot and a half tall when nine months ago when I first saw this. It's grown about uh, a little over two feet. It's grown like it's on steroids. Uh, that's that's a good way to describe it. That's right. I, I, I'm stunned. Well, uh, this this tree has used ten gallons of water in the last nine months, and I've used uh, two tablespoons of liquid nutrients per gallon. So basically, twenty tablespoons, which is you know, virtually nothing, right. uh, and 10 gallons of water. Now, traditional, conventional drip line system, well, this would be 60, 70 gallons of water? Well, at a half a gallon a day, uh, you can do the math. It's pretty simple. Yeah, you run it to, uh, yeah, exactly. It's about 60 gallons. Uh -huh. yeah. I, and wow. now, this, now, this tree planted in the soil, keep in mind, you know, the soil can be depleted of its nutrients as well. So this Japanese maple growing in the hydropod is getting a perfectly balanced uh, uh, meal every day, for yeah. lack of a better yeah, term. Yeah, exactly. It's, now, it's, the, other it's thing, Jeff, the other thing, Jeff, though, is that it's run completely independent of power. I've, I, it's run the last yeah, nine months. Yeah, you've been months, running off of a, a, a uh, small solar panel. This you were solar saying. panel right here. So a little, a little tw tw you know, 20 watt solar panel has been operating this and, you know, and literally so to use this term, fattening up the tree here. So for, ten for, gallons for of water, nine months of growth, zero power, and I've grew it, and it's grown two and a half feet. Wow, wow, that's that is amazing. Um, what's next with hydropod? I mean, I know you were telling me about other systems that are in the plants. What's mm -hmm. what's next? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the the natural jump from the single pot hydropod one is what I like to call it is a is a six pot system that we're coming out with. Uh, so hydropod six. I, I call it the mothership actually. Okay. And then there's another uh, orchid grower that looks. Uh, 
quite a bit like this. It would be something that you would set on your kitchen counter and it runs off a small solar panel with an integrated timer. Uh, but really the goal here is, is the HydroPot Farmer system. And that's what I'm going to use the proceeds from the sale of all of these products to build the HydroPot Farmer system that's a 144 plant system. It runs on less than 10 so, gallons so of water. So taking this concept here, 144 plants running the same amount of water through, which we're talking how much water? Less than 10 gallons of water for 144 plants and no power. And no power in the middle of anywhere. Well, I've actually been contacted by a, a group in Dubai that's very excited uh, about the hydropot. Uh, and, and really, that's what I designed it for, was, was for very dry, very arid countries uh, to grow food. Um, well, yeah, it kind of comes back to your background. You were uh, in the military, so you've traveled around the world. You've seen a lot of these places. Uh, and, and, you know, as you know, food can't grow in the middle of the desert. But that's right, obviously Jeff. food can now grow in the middle of the desert. Jeff, I got to tell you, um, you know, I was a C5 load master in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And uh, until you actually go to those countries, uh, it, it, it's one thing to see starving children on a television. It's a whole other thing to actually go there and see them and see people starving to death. Uh, for so many years now, we've been sending aid and, and 50 cents a day, and, but no one's ever come up with a real viable solution to nourishing people in impoverished areas. But now you're literally, the, the old saying, give them a fish, to feed them for life. You right. have literally taught them how to fish with a system that can grow food out in the middle of anywhere. Right. Uh, it, What's what's next with that? I mean, where where else can I mean, you know, I I can see this in because it is scalable. I can see it in theme parks. I can see it in shopping malls and airports and uh, commercial buildings. Uh, you know, water is a very valuable commodity. Who yeah, who would have thought twenty years ago that you would be paying a dollar or two for a bottle of water? Yeah, it's crazy. It's more it, than gasoline. It's crazy. It's more than gasoline. And and in the near future, water is going to become more and more scarce. So we have to start to rethink the way we use our, our natural resources on the planet. Uh, the Grind Thing Foundation was donated an acre of land in Ghana. And uh, through this Jump Start uh, campaign, uh, I plan on raising enough money to manufacture the Hydropot One for sale, and I'm going to use those profits to build that farmer unit, that first farmer unit in Ghana. Now, I'm sure that we're going to run into some challenges that we haven't foreseen yet, but we certainly have overcome uh, our, a, sh a fair well, share of challenges already. If they can do anything like <laughs> this Japanese maple's done in nine months, I, I think that's got to be a, <laughs> truly amazing. Um, you know, now, not to really extrapolate too far, but I could see this being able to grow food in space. Well, um, that, uh, that's not an original idea. Uh, I actually would like to prove that we can do it here first, and then who knows, maybe Hydropot Farmer will uh, find its way to Mars. Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, wow, I, I, I'm stunned, just truly stunned, especially with this thing. I, I just remember it's just this little baby tree. Well, there's uh, the proof. I, I, yeah, and, and, and we know it works. 10 gallons of water? 10 gallons of water, no power. No power. And now, this versus other hydroponic systems. I mean, we know, you know hydroponics has been around since Babylonian days. Yep. Um, what makes this different? You know, I'm glad you asked, uh, because I, it gives me an opportunity for people who don't really understand soilless culture or hydroponic growing. Um, hydroponics has been done basically the same for a long, long time. It's basically a bucket inside of a bucket. The water goes up and trickles down into the bottom bucket. As we said, a drip, they, we said a drip line system. They, and then they pump the water back up. Now, by, by reinventing hydroponics, that's what I've done. I didn't invent hydroponics. I reinvented hydroponics by watering from the bottom, bottom up, up. Which basically is your tank. Well, I brought a tank. Uh, Yes. This is what's on the bottom of the hydropod, and this is really what makes it work. This is a sealed tank, uh, airtight, watertight, and I'm using the same pump that we were using right there. And by pumping air into this tank, I force the water up into the 
into the root structure of the plant. So now, you, again, but what I'm getting doing back is, to the steroids, you're feeding the plant's roots directly. You're completely immersing the roots in the nutrient solution, completely wow. immersing it while oxygenating it. Which I know, you know, enough of plant growth. We all know that when it rains, the plant's leaves put the root, you know, water down to this trunk and mm -hmm. into the you know, soil, and thus it's getting its nutrients. That's nature's way of doing it. You've reversed nature in a way and force fed the roots directly, which is thus the steroid growth that, that kind of happens here without the, the real use of any chemicals, no, no, no chemicals, nothing all at all. All natural, it's 100% organic. It, it, it's really, um, it's a lot like planting a, a, a tree next to a river or a lake as the water ebbs and flows. That's, that's all I've done is I've just mimicked what nature's already done. Already done, you've just done it with, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a more, I won't say more efficient than nature, but... Well, yeah, yeah but it's, it is in a way more efficient because you can be able to do it anywhere. I, I, again, getting back to the, I can see these on rooftops in New York City, you know, for growing Urban food. farming, Ur you yeah, got... urban farming, uh, you know, again, as we said, the desert, anywhere at all. Uh, wow. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still just amazed by this Japanese maple. Uh, nowhere near what mine is in my backyard. Awesome job. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff.